the trainees of the, from the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration. Ladies and gentlemen, as a faculty and course coordinator of the 113th induction program for the state civil services officers to the IAS, it is my proud privilege to welcome the Honorable President of India, Shri Pranam Mukherjee. We are grateful to him for his kind consent to share his time and thoughts with us here today. Sir, the induction training program is one of the more important programs of the academy. Having a duration of eight weeks, it is a virtual rite of passage marking the transition for officers in the state services from one set of roles and responsibilities to a higher and a wider area of duties, not only within the state, but also at the center. Therefore, the aim of the course is fourfold. A, to provide an All India perspective on governance and administration. B, to impart multidisciplinary knowledge and skills for efficiency in working. C, to instill the right attitude and approach to view and understand the role of the government in general and that of the IS in particular in developing institutions vital for nation building. And finally, sir, to inculcate a sense of camaraderie and connect with the peers from all over India. Sir, the group has had a number of off-campus visits and attachments, including a week-long study tour to Sri Lanka, where the group had a first-hand look at the social sector and in the areas of pub various areas of public service delivery. In addition, the group has had a first-hand look at PPP initiatives in various sectors in the Delhi NCR region. The attachment here is, is actually the, is virtually the high point of the course, where the takeaways have always been very durable and the impressions indelible. So this in brief was the introduction to the course and the profile of the participants. I would like, now like to request the participants to please come here and share their views and offer their insights and observations into the course design and delivery so far. So may I please request Mr. Muridhar Dubey from UP. Honorable President, it is a matter of great fortune and immense pleasure for us to be here with you, sir. Uh, at Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, Missouri, we start our day with yoga or gym. We have been exposed to projects appraisal, public-private partnership, best practices in some parts of our country, like ICT implementation and Chiranjeevi Yojana in Gujarat, solid and liquid waste management in Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation, 24 into 7 water supply in Belgaum, Karnataka, computer education in schools of Kerala, uh, also, sir, communication is, and communication and skill and stress management, we were told there. In PPP, we have been exposed from road sector like Yamuna Expressway, Delhi Airport Metro, to various other small social sectors like solid liquid waste management and health uh, management in Uttarakhand. Uh, sir, here in New Delhi, we have been to Delhi integrated multimodal transport system. We also had an opportunity to call on honorable Minister of State, DOPT, Sri Narayan Swami. Sir, the fascinating part of our training was for one week in Sri Lanka from 23rd March to 30th March. It was a very useful exposure and experience visit of that country. Sir, Sri Lanka is India's largest trade partner in South Asia and in turn, India is Sri Lanka's uh, largest trade partner globally. Indian business organizations such as Indian Oil Corporation, Tata's, Bharti Airtel, Piramal Glass, LIC, Ashok Leyland, Larson and Tubro, and Taj Hotels are present in Sri Lanka. The Indian Culture Center in Colombo actively promotes Indian culture. Uh, Honorable Sir, it, it was our dream to be here with you. We are very much thankful and highly obliged for your affection and kindness. Thank you. Honorable President Sir, I submit that the participants of the 113th induction training program were exposed to the various facets of policy planning and trends in good governance with emphasis on providing an all India perspective and imparting generic skills and competencies required for handling higher responsibilities. Sir, the course content included varied subjects inter alia covering urban governance, rural development initiatives, improving service delivery in social sectors like health and education, and impacts of globalization on the Indian economy. Sir, trainees were given an overview of the e-governance initiatives and applications of information technology to aid in citizen-centric governance and quick public service delivery mechanisms as are being implemented in some states. The exhaustive case law and practices adopted in various sectors under public-private partnership mode, tools for project appraisal, accounting, and budgeting techniques have enriched the knowledge of the officer trainees, 
equipping them with better scientific and managerial tools for decision making in respect of execution of infrastructural projects. So the sessions were interactive in nature besides enabling formal and informal experience sharing among participants of the 113th induction training program. Officers were encouraged to showcase the learnings gained from the training and skills imparted by way of project report writing and formulating a model public policy document. Sessions were held with emphasis on and dealing in personal health care, communication skills, and stress management for the betterment of the officer, both in his personal and official life. I thank Honorable President, sir, for this opportunity. I'm glad to have this opportunity of meeting you when you are undergoing the training in the National Academy as you have entered into the All India Services from the State Civil Services. It's indeed an opportunity for you from many aspects, not only to acclimatize yourself from the essence of All India Services, consider the issues in the context of national perspective and to formulate the policies. When you entered into the state civil service, you were much younger. That was the first entry point in the public service. And your activities were confined to the states. You have acquired skill there. You have shown efficiency and excellence in your duties. As a result, your services have been recognized and you have been promoted to the All India Services, which speaks of your performance and its excellence. I congratulate you for that. Now you are entering into a new chapter in your service career. Here you shall not only have the opportunity of serving your state in a larger context with greater responsibility, but also your services may be deployed in the center, in the union where you will have a totally new exposure. When the All India Services were introduced, if you look back to the history, earlier it was confined only to the white people who were our rulers. For the first time, Indian Civil Service, ICS as it was known in those days, and Imperial Police Service, IP, later on which it became IPS, Indian Police Service. Imperial Police Service and ICS were open to the Indians in 1869. And of course, the first Indian ICS was Satyendranath Tagore, elder brother of Ravindranath, who had a very distinguished Career. And thereafter, once the gate was open, the Indian students showed their merit. And many of the great leaders of the national movement from different parts, they not only very successfully competed a most difficult examination, but sometimes they surpassed their counterparts coming from the mainland, the Britishers. 
this civil service, which has not only produced excellent administrators, but eminent scholars, historians, researchers. Many of you might have heard the name of Vincent Smith, a great historian. He belonged to Indian civil service. Stories of Aurobindo or Subhash Chandra Bose and later days, some many other eminent ICS officers like C.D. Deshmukh who had the distinction of becoming the first governor of Indian Reserve Bank and six min year minister of finance, cabinet minister of finance for six years in the formative stage of our developmental planning from 1950 to 1956. The service which was essentially meant to rule the subjects to subserve the interests of the colonial masters could be transformed into a mechanism of achieving the welfare state. Today you are talking of one of the curriculum you are dealing with, public-private partnership. Before 1990, this phrase was not in the vocabulary of civil servants or this was not found in the grammar of the bureaucracy or civil service in India because we are accustomed with the public sector culture. We recognized, and we recognized rightly so, at that point of time, private sector was extremely weak, that it was not possible to take initiative for the, to take initiative for the industrialization. Capital formation was extremely low. From 1901 to 1950, the average GDP growth of India was just 1%. Total grain production of India was just 50 million tons, including all sorts of grain. Wheat, rice, coarse grains, perpetual importer of food. Hardly any industrial production was there. Total steel production was not even a million ton. And from there, if we have come today to this state of affairs, more than often jokingly I used to say that in 1947 when the first finance minister of independent India presented a budget to Indian parliament, the total budgetary transaction in terms of number was just 197 crores of rupees. Of that, 171 crores of rupees was revenue, 26 crores of rupees was deficit. And the budget which Finance Minister of India has presented this year is more than 14 lakh crores of rupees. And the deficit is more than one and a half lakh crores of rupees. Today, India is the one of the largest producer of crude steel, third largest producer of cement, largest producer of rice. This conversion of the from a highly deficit economy to a powerful, vibrant economy, not even self-sufficient, but we are achieving towards that, moving towards that, has been possible because of the effective policies taken by the leaders of the country and effectively implemented 
by the indian people through their civil servants technocrats scientists technically competent personnel every branch of administration therefore we shall have to keep in mind when you are entering into the all india services that earlier your area of operation was within the territory of your state and today you belong to whole of india from himalaya to cape comorin from mizoram to dwarka the concept of pan india would be the principal center core center of your thought of your activities i wish you all success and i am quite confident the very process of your selection and your success of getting promotion speaks of your performance excellence they are in and i have no doubt in your future you will achieve much more laurels much more success i wish you all success in every endeavor of yours thank you ladies and gentlemen jai hind